<laughs> I am Father Chris Decker, joined by Olivia Galino, Jeff Blackwell, yeah, Ed Balls in the video cave over there, and Chris Williston uh, also joins us from from his uh, podcast zone in Austin, Texas. And uh, and Chris, um, we we've certainly had you on the show before as kind of a guest host um, because well. Uh, Chris has a, a similar gift in that he can talk about anything for an extended period of time, which really is a, it's a gift. It's a blessing and a curse. I think we'd agree, right? Yes, sir. But today you were on the show not just as a guest host, but also as a guest because uh, you have, uh, have, have created a, a beautiful, beautiful apostolate that's called the Mary Claire Project. And, uh, and the reason for the name and the reason for your creation of it actually have a lot to do with, uh, with your own family unit. It does. It does. Thank you, Father. I, it, it's an outstanding opportunity just to be here and, and talk to you guys about this. Um, so a year ago in June, my wife and I found out that we lost our, our, our fifth child, Mary mm-hmm. Claire. Uh, we went in for our 16-week appointment and, um, and found out that we had actually lost her about three weeks before, around 13 weeks. And um, at the time, we were obviously heartbroken, yeah. um, but there was this little bit of, there, there was this this pro- this thing that existed out there that that was a little bit weird. It was a little mm-hmm. bit different. It was something we didn't, you know, had kind of seen other other folks utilize and thought, you know, we'd like to do the same. And that was an opportunity to actually um, bury our daughter, yeah, um, Mary Claire. So there was a funeral home and a uh, cemetery up in Georgetown, which is just north of the Austin area, which would actually take possession of of the remains uh, mm-hmm. at the time that that they were available. Um, would uh, provide a small casket, would provide a small burial place in a communal burial garden there in a, a cemetery, Our Lady of the Rosary Cemetery in Georgetown, mm-hmm. Texas, and, uh, and would deliver our daughter there uh, to us um, to, to be interred. And so we, you know, thought, let's, let's do this. Yeah. We, we did one simple post on, on Facebook, I think um, kind of on a Thursday and on a Saturday morning, um, about 60 folks uh, joined us there wow. uh, b- beside that tiny grave in Georgetown, Texas, to to remember and celebrate the life of our daughter. And, you know, for us, it was just this it was this moment as we sat there surrounded by people, Catholic, non-Catholic, um, mm-hmm. Christian, non-Christian, um, some lifelong friends, some relatively new friends, people who just came out of the woodwork. Yeah. Um, it struck us that this was very rare. And mm-hmm. in the eyes of some, it was very, it was very kind of strange and different. But it was beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, I think even from that week, from that moment, almost immediately, I started thinking, you know, why, why is this weird? Why is mm-hmm. this so strange? And, um, and, and it started kicking around in the back of my mind, like somebody should really do something to make these kinds of services more available. Isn't that um, usually what happens is we, we think, geez, somebody should really do something. Mm-hmm. Somebody should. And, and so for about nine months it just kind of kicked around in the back of my head and and i watched as as other friends experience similar loss and my Mm -hmm. wife god bless her she would get on the phone they'd be in different parts of texas and and my wife would get on the phone and and try to to call uh the diocese call catholic cemeteries call um just folks who might know of something similar and she couldn't find any similar kind of offerings in which, you know, somebody would just stand there and offer uh, the physical goods to help, um, to help people celebrate the, the spiritual reality and the physical reality that they experienced in miscarriage. And so it kicked around for about nine months. And then one night Michelle and I were out to dinner and I said, you know, I just keep thinking about that idea that I had about, about trying to make these services more available to others. And she said, what are you talking about? <laughs> So, well, okay, I, I guess I forgot to tell you that this has been kicking around in the back of my mind for the last nine months. Here's what I think we ought to do. Here's the plan on how I think it ought to be done. And she just looked at me and decisively said, we need to do that. Yeah. Period. I find it interesting that the time in which uh, this, uh, this point of discernment gestated within right. your heart was uh, the time of uh, bringing a child to bear. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's you know? exactly right. Yep. Yeah. There, there are no coincidences there. Now, um, I, I will say, uh, you know, because as you say, it is a strange thing in the world in which we live today to, to seek the remains of, of a child that has, has been miscarried. Did you find any obstacles doing that? You know, the biggest obstacles were just um, 
that it was outside of the norm of the medical process. Mm-hmm. Um, in most states, and, and people may or may not know this, in most states, um, the, the, the family, the couple, does have right to the remains of their child. Oh, okay. Now, there are some, some states actually put up barriers um, just because of liability reasons with the medical facilities. But in most states, all but just a handful, um, families have a right to, to ask to request for the remains of their, their child um, who's lost in miscarriage. Um, the biggest challenge for us was just making sure everybody was on the same page, that they knew um, what our wishes were. Because, of course, you know, you show up at the medical facility or, um, and, and, and you start going through the process and the paperwork and all that. And, uh, and you have to be very careful to, to watch what you're signing, that you're not yeah. signing away those rights. And, um, and so they just say sign here, right. just and, sign here. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you, and you're emotional. It's raw. It's difficult. It's challenging in so many ways. And so your, your instinct is kind of to go, okay, you're the authority. You're the, the medical provider. Just, just tell me what to do and let's, yeah. let's just get this done because it's, it's heart wrenching. And it's uh, difficult in, in the medical profession today, uh, to, to not, to, to have to be on your guard, you would expect when you're in a hospital um, for any reason that they would have your uh, your soul in in their care and not just your physical beating human heart. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Well, this is so this is so outside the norm that it hasn't even really entered into the thought of of most medical providers and most medical facilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just just being being vigilant about making sure that um, about what you're signing, asking about what you're signing, making sure that your doctor, the nurse, yeah. uh, that everybody knows your wishes. Mm-hmm. And um, and there were a couple barriers, you know, for us, it was, um, they, they kind of said, well, it's, you know, we're going to have to, to send remains down to the lab and they're going to have to process and it could take up to two weeks and yeah. da, 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 da. I mean, there were, there were all kinds of kind of artificial barriers that were thrown up um, that we were eventually able to get around. But, um, yeah, but we just had to ask, right, and, and and be persistent. And and I think that may be the one of the the bigger things uh, for those who maybe have experienced miscarriages is is to uh, is to be upfront about what your wishes are, as you say. And so uh, once the wishes are made known, um, once you are able to uh, to receive um, the the remains of the child, this is kind of where the Mary Claire project uh, comes into focus, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So again, we we were tremendous benefactors of, um, of the gift that had been given by those who had invested in these services and offering them, um, free of charge. Uh, because obviously there's, there's a lot of expense anytime you're doing anything medical and having, um, multiple thousands of dollars of funeral expenses or, or cemetery expenses piled on, on top of medical expenses, uh, could make it cost prohibitive, um, to to use these kind of services. It it is one of those things where, uh, it is not simply a a free thing. Mm -hmm. Anytime Mm -hmm. you go to a funeral home, I mean, Mm -hmm. you're looking at at least like a $1,200 situation, if not more. Yeah. Yeah, you really are. So yeah, what the Mary Claire Project seeks to do, um, there you know there are three major physical needs that that folks experience during this time. They need uh, someone to help them uh, prepare remains for burial. Um, they need something in which to bury um, yeah. the body, um, and they need a place to bury. Pretty mm-hmm. simple thing. So um, we are actually um, in, working in partnership um, with um, with funeral homes who are willing to offer their services free of charge to families experiencing this loss. Um, the Mary Claire project itself has actually taken over uh, the building of these caskets um, in which these children are buried. Uh, they're small, they're wood, they're beautiful. Um, the gentleman who made the casket in which Mary Claire is buried actually made it by hand. He's just an employee of the, um, of the, of the funeral home. Oh, wow. wow. And he makes each and every one of them by hand. It takes him an hour to make them. They provide him the materials, but he just does it out of the goodness of his heart. And uh, but he's seventy years old. Mm-hmm. He's seventy years old, and um, and he does it joyfully. But we didn't know how long he'd be able to do it. So sure, yeah. Time one the, is one of those things that's not that, that is always ticking. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. So one of the first things we said as the project is uh, we're going to uh, we're going to step in and start making these these wooden caskets uh, for families who experience the loss. Um, and and we engaged a, a wood shop. Um, the gentleman who ran the wood shop actually had just lost a grandchild and, oh, wow. and, um, had had the grandchild buried through the same program and, and was so willing to step up. So there we go. We've got someone to help. We've got some, we've got something in which to, uh, to bury the children. And, uh, and so now we're just looking for additional partnerships with cemeteries 
right now inside the state of Texas, although I, I fully anticipate the day in which we will be looking for partnerships all over the country yeah. uh, to just provide a place um, for families to go. I, I can't even, I mean, I just can't underestimate. I, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't overstate, let me say that, how important it is to us as a family to have a place that we can go and take our children yeah. and, mm-hmm. point and say, here's your sister. Mm-hmm. She was That's a person. Right. She lived. She died. Um, that's the reality, but we, but we celebrate brief life. That's right. And that's the thing about time as well, is that however long we're given, whether it's a, a, a period of many years or whether it is only a few moments um, in the womb, uh, we believe that each life is sacred and each life has a purpose. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think what's really kind of beautiful about the Mary Claire Project is that it came to birth um, because of the witness of a child who who uh, who herself lived only a very short time, right. and and that in and of itself shows very much that God's design works even in the midst of tragedy. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and I think that's one of the things I love about this. I mean, we were talking before the show about one of the reasons that Fulton Sheen I think is so popular is because he makes sense. Yep. you know, he's very right. rational. He's very logical, and I think that applies here too. You know, it's something. It makes sense. That um, that a child dies and you bury the child. Yes. Um, exactly. And if we believe, as we do, that um, the child um, that a, a child comes into existence at conception, it is a fully human being, yep. fully human uh, person. Then it makes sense that if that child dies in the womb, just as if it dies outside the womb, you bury him or her. Yeah. Um, and so I so I, I love that just, just merely for the fact that it makes sense, but also because it is such a thing of comfort to have a yeah. physical place to go. We're very physical creatures to so have a physical place to go to and commune with the physical aspect of your of your child and, and, right. and be in communion. But I'm wondering, um, my question is kind of a, d- a dual question. So he's ready. Y'all, y'all can have I'm at it. Um, <laughs> is um, I, I don't know um, if. If if you if your apostolate is mainly geared towards like Catholic families, it seems to be a very uh, you know, Catholic theme of uh, of respect for life. But I'm wondering, you know, if if you it, is it a fully you know Catholic funeral? And, it, and if, if if it is, I'm assuming then you know Father Chris, like would that be something that you? I mean, maybe you have if you've been approached to do that before, or I'm just wondering yeah. about like that aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that any time that that people have come forward uh, to me uh, to to seek a, a funeral ritual for a child that's been miscarried, that you certainly may do that. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, most of those funerals uh, that I've done, I think I might have done one or two, and and they were, I believe, they were graveside. So we basically did the funeral ritual at the graveside. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it didn't take place in the church. It certainly could have, mm-hmm. you know, um, because there there used to be so many stigmas about, uh, um, as the Cajuns would say, who can be passed through to church, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, but certainly you could sell uh, celebrate uh, a full um, a full full funeral liturgy with the mass and everything. Um, but but that is uh, certainly up to up to the parents um, because sometimes, as you can imagine, um, th- there's a lot of weight on the soul, you oh, know. Yeah. And, uh, and so sometimes a more abbreviated uh, liturgy is what's called for. But it's, it's one of those things that, at least from the priest's standpoint, um, it's, it's open to the discernment of the family as well as, uh, uh, you know, what perhaps is more appropriate for the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, Chris, I, I don't know the answer to that question because I don't know um, uh, what you, you all sought. Yeah, for us, uh, actually, we just did a, a small graveside celebration, yeah. um, kind of a rite of burial mm-hmm. um, yeah. there. Uh, and that's, you know, that's really the beautiful thing about this, Olivia, is it's, it's, it's nonpartisan, it's right. non-denomination. Yeah. Um, the reality is um, that anybody who knows a family who's experiencing this loss um, knows that, that they're mourning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all of the debates that we engage in about when life begins or when it doesn't begin, what, what is, it, all of that fades away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is just a family knows loss in yeah. that time. And so, um, whereas we obviously kind of brought our own our own Catholic faith into the celebration of this life, um, the Mary Claire Project it really exists for anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, it exists for anybody who wants to celebrate that life under any circumstances. Yeah. Um, now, clearly, we we will be partnering with with cemeteries in which um, I think the only kind of requirement of of the cemeteries that we've that we've dealt with is that there is some kind of Abra- Abrahamic symbol. 
on the burial markers. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that could even be a rainbow or mm -hmm. some something mm -hmm. else. I mean, that's very very broad when you get into to to cemetery terms. Um, but uh, but yeah, just just basically, um, we we're acknowledging something basically human, mm -hmm. yeah. and that is that life existed, um, that life unfortunately came to a premature end mm -hmm. and that that life deserves to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone can, can appreciate that. So, so if I can ask personally, um, sure. uh, what, what has this done for your family to be able to celebrate, uh, the brief life of Mary Claire? Yeah. Um, you know, my kids talk about her a lot. Mm -hmm. Wow. They, they talk about her a lot. Um, they draw pictures uh, of our family with her uh, in it, in them. Um, yeah. She is a part of our family. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that couldn't have happened or wouldn't have happened if we'd gone through just a, a, a standard medical procedure in which, um, you know, her remains were disposed of, uh, as yeah. it were. Um, but I think it would be more difficult. It would it would make her more ethereal and yeah. less physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and so it's hard for me to imagine that that they would have the same connection to her mm -hmm. as they do. Yeah. There's something so beautiful uh, that that John Paul II encapsulates in the in the theology of the body, and that is the connection between the physical and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And any time that we try to to divorce those two things from one another, we do so to our peril. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and and this really is just an acknowledgement of that, that there is something that, yes, the, the spirit, the soul is, is, is lost or, or returned back to God in heaven, um, but that the body did exist yeah. and the body ought to be um, uh, kind of celebrated sure. in the same way that the soul is celebrated. And yeah. the body will continue to exist in the exactly. resurrection of the body. And yeah. that's the thing. Uh, I know um, it's, it's very popular nowadays uh, for, for parishioners to request, uh, request cremation mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. just because for the longest time the Catholic Church uh, discouraged it. Right. Um, but the reason that it did was because uh, it is a more full sign to have the body present right. at mm -hmm. the funeral mass because it it it, uh, it suggests it, our body becomes a symbol of of what will happen. Our body, mm -hmm. our our corpse becomes a sacramental in that moment, where where we uh, our dead body mm -hmm. is a symbol of what the Lord will raise up in a glorified form, mm -hmm. and uh, and so that's actually what the church teaches today is that while cremation is not forbidden. Um, it is preferable, if possible, that the body be present right. for the celebration of the funeral mass, because our body that that becomes um, that becomes a, a not a, a that becomes a thing, if you will, mm -hmm. itself is raised to the dignity of sacramental, right. because it becomes a full sign of of the time in which sacraments will not need to hold it any mm -hmm. longer; it will be glorified. So, what a great what a great and beautiful um, apostolate this is. Mm -hmm. To, to be able to to celebrate the fact that that we are we are set aside from the moment of our conception and even after death our body is set aside as something holy mm -hmm. that's why cemeteries are holy ground you exactly. know um, and so uh, Chris what a, a, a beautiful thing uh, certainly indeed and uh, and of course uh, obligatorily uh, I know that that you guys have many ways in which people can find out more. And one of the things that I would be interested to see is uh, those who are listening to us or watching us uh, all over the country, um, can they get information about how they might uh, set up something in, in their own to maybe be an affiliate of the Mary Claire Project? Sure. Yeah, we would love to hear from you. Um, you, can, you can find all of our information at our website. It's just www.maryclaireproject.com. That's M-A-R-Y-C-L-A-I-R-E project.com, maryclaireproject.com. Um, come and, and all the contact information is there on the page. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to assist you in any way we can. Um, this is not something that's proprietary to, to us or our area. Um, we just, we believe that this ought to be ubiquitous. We believe yeah. that it ought to be everywhere and, um, and that these kinds of celebrations of life should not be, uh, abnormal, but they should be the norm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we'd love to help in any way we can. We'd love to hear from you. And and that's uh, as uh, as they say in um, in evening prayer and in the ordination rite. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to completion, mm -hmm. um, because that is um, that is, is something that is needed and it is an important witness in in our world uh, that is asking those uh, finally asking some of those deeper questions about um, if life begins here mm -hmm. at conception, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and this is a way to join um, that uh, that kind of that reasonable thing happening in the brain with uh, what we are hardwired for, which is an experience of God, an experience of faith, mm-hmm. and uh, and so Chris uh, certainly as a as a friend of the underground, um, but also as as a husband and as a father, um, we thank you for your witness, and uh, and I thank Michelle, your wife, for saying yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Father. Yes, indeed. Uh, and so again, uh, Mary Claire C L A I R E Project dot com is uh, is the web address, and you will find out everything uh, there that you need to know to maybe become uh, an affiliate. And uh, and and I happen to know that that, that Chris is is almost always uh, connected to some internet enabled device, <laughs> and so he will be in touch with you uh, as well.